By this point, since it's been in the media for a few days, some of you are probably familiar with some recent news concerning ancient Rome. A coin, discovered in 1713 in Transylvania, and which has long been considered a fake, has been reassessed and is now thought to possibly be genuine. The coin in question is just one of a small set which bears the markings Imsponsiani, an abbreviation of Imperator Sponsianus. In other words, Emperor Sponsianus or Sponsian, as he's been called in the news lately. So, what's this coin? Who was this person? And was this really an emperor of Rome that we had not heard of before now? Well, the coin was one of eight which were documented by the Habsburg Inspector of Medals for the Imperial Collection in Vienna, Karl Horaeus, and which were probably discovered by Johann David von Palm. I'm saying probably because apparently the only record we have of this is a handwritten note by Horaeus, in which he abbreviates the person who gave him the coins, except that the abbreviation is not actually a name. Instead, we think it's an abbreviation of an the senior Habsburg finance minister, which would be von Palm. And the coin in question is one of four coins that we know of that bear the name of Sponsian. Two of those coins are in Vienna, one is in Romania, and the last is in the UK, specifically held in the University of Glasgow. That's the one which has been shaking things up over the past few days. Numismaticists, people who specialize in the study of coins, both ancient and modern, initially dismissed this as a fake, and with good reason. The Sponsian coins were apparently found alongside other coins bearing the markings of the emperors Philip and Gordian III, and those coins are probably real in part because they're stamped and they have roughly equal weights. The Sponsian coins, on the other hand, do not. The weights, and thus the metal content, are not at all equal. On top of that, rather than being stamped, these coins appear to have been cast in molds, leading to a slightly odd shape, and the markings are weird, to say the least. Like we've already gone over, the obverse side of the coin that has been examined in Glasgow says Emperor Sponsian but the reverse side shows markings from Republican-era coins from roughly about 170 BC-160 that time period. On top of that, Roman coins more often than not, if not actually all of the time, and I'm avoiding a totalizing description here because numismatics is not my wheelhouse when it comes to ancient history, when they refer to an emperor, they say Caesar Augustus, not Imperator. The coin in question is dated to the 3rd century, and because it was found with the coins of Philip and Gordian, it's estimated to maybe date to about the 250s or maybe the 260s, if you want to push it forward a bit. During the 3rd century, coins were often counterfeited. These were called barbarized coins or barbarous imitations, because they were usually made in Central and Eastern Europe, to the Romans, the land of the barbarians and they were designed to function as imperial currency. So these Sponsian coins were believed to be fakes created sometime in the 18th century, and scuffed up and dirtied in order to confuse antiquarians and collectors, and hopefully add value to the coins and allow the forgers to make a quick buck. The problem is that seven years after these coins were reputedly discovered, in 1720, an inscription was discovered which actually bore the name Nicodemus Sponsianus. So you could argue that maybe, if these are fakes, the forgers just got lucky and the inscription discovered seven years later is really just a coincidence. But it is something that started to poke holes in the idea that these were fake coins. But then again, two more references were apparently found even later. So maybe that backs up the idea that this was a genuine coin, or maybe those other two references are fake. I've been unable to determine what those two references are, just that they exist so I'm not really able to pass judgment on that. This coin and others were recently examined with an electron microscope and a spectrometer. The coins of Gordian and Philip had similar levels of gold content, which suggests that they were made in the same batch, but the Sponsian coin has a high admixture of silver and copper, which tells us that the ore was probably unrefined, and the levels of silver and copper are similar to other gold objects from the province of Dacia, part of what eventually becomes Transylvania, where the coins were found. This strongly suggests that the Sponsian coins were from that region. 
The coins were also examined for wear, and it was concluded that there was sufficient wear and tear on all of them to lend credence to the idea that the coins were all ancient, but then again, the study which was published on this notes that wear can be fabricated, and it also does not appear to have been peer-reviewed, so this is maybe making a big deal out of nothing. So, is the coin real? Possibly. Certainly we know that at least one of the inscriptions is real. So, let's just say for the sake of argument that given that we have references to a Sponsian, that he himself was real. Why would he have made coins? Well, the 3rd century crisis isn't exactly that well documented, but we do know that Dacia was cut off from the rest of the Empire for a little while. If Sponsian was real, it's very possible that he was some sort of local commander who stayed behind in Dacia, and given that the mint in Dacia was shut down in the 250s, if we date his command to the 260s, it would help explain the oddities present in the coin that was examined, since artisans would have had to cast the currency, not stamp it. In the chaos of the 3rd century, as Dacia became isolated, Sponsian may have claimed Imperium, but he was never proclaimed Augustus, hence the Imperator Sponsianus found on the coins. He only claimed rule of Dacia. It's possible that he found himself in a similar situation that Syagrius did in northern Gaul towards the end of the Western Empire in the 400s with the kingdom of Soissons, whatever that polity exactly was. When Aurelian gained power in 270, Dacia was formally abandoned and he collects as many coins as possible and he melted them down in an effort to stabilize the currency, which might help explain why so few of these have survived, if they are indeed genuine. Similarly, we have two other coins which point to another emperor, or maybe a usurper, or some sort of local political player. In the 1930s and the 1980s respectively, one coin was found in Lorraine, and another found near Paris. The coins are actually believed to be genuine, we don't have any real reason to believe that they're fakes, and these two refer to a man named Sobonicus, who, based on the coin's location and the name itself, is believed to have been a ruler in Gaul, probably after the province began to split away. We don't have much information to work with, so essentially what we do know is that the Sobonicus coins range between about 244 and about 260, with the majority of scholars thinking that Sobonicus was prevalent in Roman politics in the earlier portion of that date range. One side of the coins depict Mercury, who was one of the major gods worshipped in Gaul, further backing up the idea that Sobonicus was Gallic, and while Mercury would appear on coins minted for Posthumus, the emperor of the breakaway Gallic Empire, the dating is a little difficult because Mercury does not appear to have been widely worshipped in Gaul until the second half of the 3rd century. It is entirely possible that Sobonicus led some sort of revolt or rebellion in Gaul just before Posthumus led his revolt in 260, but another interpretation, based on the coin's style, is that it should really be dated to 248. The other main idea surrounding Sobonicus is that he was not an emperor or any other sort of ruler in Gaul. Rather, he was a commander under Aemilian, someone who did claim Roman emperorship for three months in 253. Aemilian's predecessor was Trebonianus Gallus, who ruled between 251 and 253. And after Aemilian won a victory over the Goths on the Danube, his troops proclaimed him emperor. He rushed to Italy and overthrew Gallus, but was then assassinated by his own soldiers. In this line of reasoning, Sobonicus usurped power in Rome for about two or three months, but he was defeated in turn by the man who would become the Emperor Valerian. Neither Sponsian nor Sobonicus should come as very much of a surprise. The crisis of the 3rd century was a period in which at least 28 different men claimed to be Emperor of the Roman Empire, or at least a part of it. Now we do have a source for this period, the Historia Augusta, which mentioned a list of 30 men called the 30 Tyrants of Gallienus, men who claimed the title of Emperor and rebelled or attempted to usurp the throne during the reign of Gallienus. The source is notoriously unreliable and parts of it have been shown to be fabricated. There may be, for example, not actually 30 Tyrants, but only a handful of usurpers, with the total number being inflated to resemble the historical 30 tyrants of Athens installed to rule Athens by Sparta during a period of the Peloponnesian War. 
There is a hypothetical source which the Historia Augusta and some other sources are believed to have used as a common source called the Kaisergeschichte, the Emperor's List. So, given the paucity of sources for the 3rd century, it's entirely possible that somebody like Sponstein could have proclaimed some sort of rule or title, as Soponicus appears to maybe have done, and it just wasn't recorded, or was recorded under a different name, or was maybe entered into the Kaisergeschichte, which is now lost. As of right now, that's all we can really say for certain. So, did the Roman Empire in fact get a new emperor? Or emperors, if you count Soponicus? Maybe. Maybe not. We will need more research to fully determine this, and I am greatly looking forward to what happens with this topic over the coming months.